Hi, my name is Lucy Monks and I'm the Public Affairs Manager at the RBA. I'm here today with Adrian Mallison, our Head of Economic Research at the RBA, to talk about the RBA's second coronavirus study findings, which we published this week. Um, the survey was a result of um, work that we did to pull together the thoughts and views of hundreds of members across the country on the impact of coronavirus on them. Um, it's been an incredibly useful exercise. So hopefully we'll have a good discussion today, Adrian, about uh, the findings um, and what the ROBA is going to do next with them. So I just wondering if you could take a moment to talk us through the key headlines um, of the survey. Thanks, Lucy. Um, I, I, I think it's fair to say that we're in exceptional times, just to kind of illustrate that. Uh, we've been running the RIBA Future Trend Survey since 2009. Uh, last month, we had a, a, a balance score about future workloads of uh, minus 82. Uh, to put that in context, the previous low was minus 31 in March 2009. Um, so, you know, it is exceptional. I, th I think it's different. Um, this is going to be uh, a much more rapid contraction, but our hope is that it's much more rapid growth post contraction as we move out of lockdown. Um, I think for the architectural uh, community, to put it very crudely, there's three areas. Uh, that there's to ensure their future work. There's new commission, there's design work, and there's on-site working. Um, Design work has, has really been quite remarkable, the speed with which architects have adapted their working practice um, to carry on their design work at home. Um, turning now just to on-site working, uh, which is where around a third of architectural workload uh, comes from, uh, we've seen a really rapid decline in on-site work due to uh, the lockdown. So there's been around uh, uh, 40 percent of projects have been put on hold since the first of March. Ar around 60 percent of uh, respondents had, had had at least one of their project sites closed. And, and there's widespread project delays, 90 percent are reporting project delays, and they're caused by people across the construction team, contractors, uh, um, clients, uh, and, and even kind of the more admin side, building control officers, planning uh, offices uh, are, are making for project delays. Um, these these projects, the challenges of projects is feeding directly into practices uh, uh, and the uh, business of carrying out architecture. So between 50 and 60 percent of uh, respondents told us that they had fewer new business inquiries, decreased workload uh, and were experiencing a cash flow um, reduction. And is, is that something you're seeing as a kind of consistent picture across the sector or are the impacts different depending on the type of practice or size of practice? Yeah, that, that's a good question. I mean, the, the, it is across the board. All practices are, are feeling this to some extent, but what we are seeing is that it's particularly the smaller practices, those with five or fewer members of a practice mm. who are uh, facing challenges around uh, getting new commission and and then managing their cash flow, mm. um, and and I, so they do face a, a particular yeah. issue. But I think for everyone, it, it is a challenge, and that that challenge is starting to be expressed. In we we have work for now, it might be reduced, but we have work for now. The big question is where is that new work yeah. going to come from? Clients yeah. are going to be very nervous in the coming uh, few months, and and that's why we. Uh, at the RBA uh, are looking to a, a, a fully funded um, uh, construction plan um, to, to bring UK construction yeah. back to where it is. Um, even through these challenges though, I think, I think it's worth mentioning that 30% of practices are finding new and better ways of working. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, architects have long been at the forefront of the digitization of the construction and we're seeing it again. Um, I think I'd like now to turn to some of the effects that are being had upon uh, this by people. So economics yeah. is about money, but money, of course, affects people's lives, people's livelihoods. Um, you know, architecture is a, a collective activity uh, and, and it's being part of a collective. It is being spilled out by day to day being together and that's just being lost. And I think it's also worth remembering that for, for, for some people, home isn't a safe place. 
mm. and we're starting to see now the the real effects the lockdown is is having mm. so you know 70 to 80 percent are now working at, at home or, or mainly at home um working patterns have changed people are being furloughed people are working reduced hours that's having economic uh, effects you know it, 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 it's over 55 percent saying their income's been reduced yeah. whether personal income or household income do you think um, there's an interplay between those kind of shifts and the impact on mental health for example with caring responsibilities whether that's children or family members or kind of broader community and uh, the kind of way that people are feeling at the moment yeah, I, I, I think so. I, I think there's there's a couple of things going on. There's a sense of isolation mm. from some. Uh, you know, they're divorced from their working life, and some people mm. are working at home alone. And and then other people face another difficulty, which is increased uh, caring responsibilities um, around children, and that particularly mm. we think falls to women. Mm. Um, uh, and then you know. Also, I think that's translating into a decline in mental health. And I think one of the, the, the most stark figures we've seen in our survey is that around 40 percent um, are saying that uh, their mental health has been uh, affected and 20 percent feeling isolated. Mm -hmm. So I think just to sum up, there's, there's the economic stuff, the, 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 the workloads, those are, are coming back in part, but there's real questions about future workloads. Um, there's business challenges for practices, but at the heart of all of this is people, uh, and people are, are starting to suffer uh, because of lockdown and because of economic uncertainty. So, Lucy, I know um, you know that part of your role in the policy team is to try and influence government policy uh, to mitigate some of the effects that I've described. So. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that, please. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you're right. This is obviously a kind of very people centred crisis. Um, so one of the issues that you brought up, uh, mental health, which is obviously one of the biggest concerns uh, facing individuals across the country, aside from the physical health impacts of coronavirus. Um, we have been raising this with uh, government departments to see whether there'll be any movement or any kind of further plan on how to tackle the kind of burgeoning potential mental health crisis. In the meantime, the RBA has been putting together um, information, worksheets, advice and guidance, which is available on the website architecture.com. Um, and if anyone's interested in accessing that, they can just search for mental health or go to the coronavirus hub. Um, that's obviously been a substantial part of the the kind of work that we've been doing the second part i guess especially relating to those running uh, their own practices has been how they're going to be able to pay themselves and pay the bills on a month-to-month -month basis we've seen a lot of conversation around the kind of impact on businesses that would immediately close because of lockdown for example pubs um or venues, cinemas, etc. Um, well, I think, and I don't know if you want to correct me on this, Adrian, that the kind of impact on the construction sector, on the architecture sector, is a little bit more long tailed just because there might be work that was finishing off um, a couple of weeks or months down the track, but it's the drop off in new business inquiries that are really going to kind of push the real pinch point back uh, further for, for, for architects. Um, and under those circumstances, we've been um, lobbying the government to ensure that the schemes that are available at the moment are extended out um, so they will be accessible in a few months time. And we've had some success around that, uh, for example, the furloughing scheme. Um, the other point that we are still picking up and want to push on is uh, an issue around people who draw down their salary through dividends. Um, it's something we've been working with other industry bodies with um, from the creative sector, professional business service sector um, and others uh, to make the case to government for various reasons. It's got um, very tied up in the kind of mechanics of government and also the politics of the situation in terms of government expenditure and what they believe is um, achievable across this time period. But um, it's something we're going to continue to focus on just because that financial uncertainty is going to have the biggest impact on the individuals. I mean, it's really important that you bring up that point around kind of the government as client as well. Um, 
we've had a lot of noise, particularly in the run up to the last election and as a result of the kind of December 2019 um, election results, which put a big focus on infrastructure development and kind of quality of life across the country, both as a solution to productivity issues that the country has faced for a very long time now, since uh, before the last recession even, and kind of the uh, the sense of inequality that many people feel um, across this country. So one of the things that we've been really clear on, and in fact have been clear on for a number of years, is that it's about um, building better, building smarter, using government funds better and smarter, and actually developing um, a kind of more cohesive sense of community um, across the country through a better built environment. So that does mean a, a, a plan around infrastructure investment, as you said, but also making sure the planning system is um, up to scratch and is where it needs to be in terms of helping deliver those kind of high quality projects that do embed and understand the value of design. Um, but for anyone watching this and wants to know more about what we're doing um, on the kind of government communications, they can go and search for working with government on architecture.com. Um, we also have a political update that you can sign up to, which goes out every Friday. So if you email uh, the RBA at info at roba.org and ask to be signed up to the political update, this will be sent on to our team. And we can add you to our mailing list on that front. Um, so that's kind of overall summary of <laughs> the many things that we've been doing on the government side. I don't know if you've got anything else you wanted to add in, Adrian, or I can just sieve off until no, uh, no, no. the end of this. OK, great. No, thank well, you. Um, no, so uh, as we outlined, there's a lot of work that's going on, more work than we can cover in a very short video. Um, Adrian works um, on the economic analysis, um, feeds into the work that we're doing as a policy and public affairs team. Um, this is the information that we take forward to provide uh, intelligence and advice to our members. We understand it's an incredibly difficult time for very many people um, across the country. We want to make sure the ROBA is there for you um, and representing you in the best way possible. So please do get in touch if you have any thoughts or concerns. Um, as I said, you can email the info centre um, if you want to get in direct contact or talk to your regional um, teams uh, to have further conversations on how they can best support you.